Welcome to Inside Lake Forest. I'm Eileen Luby, your host, and today I'm visiting with the Lake Forest Lake Bluff Historical Society, where they preserve what is unique and special about our community. Let's step inside. Good morning, Janice. Hi, Eileen. Welcome to the Lake Forest Lake Bluff Historical Society. Thank you so much. Janice Hack, the executive director here. Janice, tell me, when did the society begin? Well, we started in 1972, mm -hmm. kind of the country was gearing up a little bit for the bicentennial, mm -hmm. and the first president of the board was Elmer Vliet, okay. who uh, you might know from the Vliet Museum in Lake Bluff, and everyone felt that we were kind of behind the times, mm -hmm. and we needed to really start collecting the history of the community for, uh, for everyone to enjoy and keep for the future. So you're located here on Westminster, and this particular building, can you give me a brief history about how you ended up here? and? A little bit about it. Well this building has an interesting history. It was originally a coach house mm -hmm. and um, then later became the Masonic Lodge mm -hmm. and when the Masons moved out the City of Lake Forest took over the building and it actually housed the offices while City Hall was being renovated and then the building was vacant so it was mm -hmm. offered to the Historical Society in 1998 and we moved in here and it became the first museum for the Historical Society. Oh, wonderful. Well, as I look around the room, there's so much history here. How do you collect these type of items, and are, are you always looking for donations? We are looking for donations. We have a collections policy that defines what we collect. Mm -hmm. uh, we collect photographs, maps, plat maps, artifacts, clothing. Mm -hmm. uh, we are fortunate to have a um, hundred years of the Lake Forester, the only mm -hmm. hard copies wow. in existence. And uh, we rely primarily on donations, mm -hmm. um, and people are welcome to bring things in here and offer them for the collection, and um, we, in many cases, will accept them and make find a permanent home. Well, I know we're going to meet Lori in a little bit to talk about one of the exhibits, but the exhibits itself that you have here, is that once a year, or do you have special programs and things that the residents should know about? We do. We have one major exhibit a year, and the topics range from you know the history of golf to the history of the railroad. We had an exhibit on local inventors, and uh, coming up for the sesquicentennial, mm -hmm. we're doing an exhibit, Lake Forest Lost and Found. It's going to be kind of the unknown stories of people you should know or events right. that happened, and it's a chance to kind of bring these back to life um, and uh, you know celebrate the last 150 years of Lake Forest. Oh, fantastic. And I don't know how many residents actually make it over here, but as I look around the room, there's just so much history that really shouldn't be missed. Well, we um, do handle about 2,000 research requests a year. Wow. Um, so in addition to our exhibits and our public programs, our lectures mm -hmm. and tours, we um, also have a research center okay. where people can come in, research their own home, or do genealogy research. We have a lot of businesses that will mm -hmm. come in and research their history. And uh, those research requests come in person. Uh, we have them over the phone, email. Mm -hmm. We get them from across the country and all around the world. Wow. Now, when is the building open for the public to come and view the exhibits? Our public hours where people can just drop in are Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Sunday from mm -hmm. 1 to 4. Okay. And then we also have hours by appointment on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday morning, and, and Friday. The website is www.lflbhistory.org. Well, Janice, thank you so much. Thank you. And I look forward to seeing the exhibit now. Great, thank you. Hi, Lori. Hi. It's so nice meeting you. Nice to meet you, too. Lori Stein, who is a curator here at the Lake Forest Historical Society. Lori, tell me a little bit about this exhibit you have. Sure. Um, well, it's called Nature by Design, okay. Drawings of the Foundation for Architecture and Landscape Architecture. And it's been up since April and will be up till um, next January. Okay. Um, and this exhibit uh, showcases uh, several drawings from the 1920s and 30s that were done for a special school of landscape architecture and architecture that was held at Lake Forest College. Oh, wow. Um, it was called the Foundation for Architecture and Landscape Architecture, and it was started by members of the Lake Forest Garden Club and some of the landscape architects and architects they employed at their own homes. Oh, wow. Um, and the goal was sort of to educate student landscape architects and architects to work together okay. because in their universities they were in different departments mm -hmm. you know the landscape architects would be in the horticulture department right. and the architects would be in the engineering department but on commissions like country estates they had to work very closely mm -hmm. to 
you know, create something that was sort of a coherent whole. Yes. So they used, um, you know, the summer to bring about 16 of those students, um, you know, the best students in the Midwest at places like Ohio State, University of Illinois, maybe University of Michigan, and mm -hmm. they were chosen by their professors and they came here all expenses paid wow. by the foundation. They boarded at the college mm -hmm. and they learned from sort of masters of the field. Very cool. Yeah, so the drawings that are on display here are all by those students. Nate, well mm -hmm. let's take a look at a few of them. Sure. Um, let's see, there are a couple over here which are interesting mm -hmm. that showcase Villa Turicum, okay. um, which you know a lot of visitors are interested in that mm -hmm. estate given its um, you know, sort of mysterious past mm -hmm. and the fact that the Rockefeller McCormicks were only there for one or two years. Mm -hmm. um, this one in particular is, uh, was drawn by probably one of the most famous students at, of the foundation named Max Abramovitz. Okay. Um, you know, it was really interesting to me to follow the students to go on to see what they went on to do wow. um, after they, you know, left the foundation. And Max Abramovitz, um, he designed several buildings at the University of Illinois, like Assembly Hall. Wow. The students were competing for a prize. Okay. Um, Edward L. Ryerson sponsored a year-long trip to Europe for the students. Wow. Uh, two, uh, you know, the two best students at the end of the summer um, had the opportunity to travel together around Europe for a year, all expenses paid. So wow. all of these drawings are really also part of a contest because they were all judged at and the end of the summer. I'm noticing too, Lori, that they're in different materials. So this right. piece is in watercolor. This is in watercolor. There's some in pencil, some in charcoal, mm -hmm. some in ink, which okay. we we'll see. Um, so yeah, lots of different mediums. But so this one is from. Um, you know, a market in Italy. Wow. <laughs> so they, they, you know, they would go all over, they went to Italy, France, and England. And um, the, you know, the two, the two students, one landscape architect and one architect would travel together. Nate. Well, there's so much history here, yes. Lori. How do you even, you know, pull it all together? I mean, in your work? Right. Well, um, one thing I should say is these drawings are all on loan okay. from the library, Lake Forest Library, mm -hmm. and the collection at Lake Forest College. Neat. And, okay. you know, there had been some research done on them initially, but um, there was a lot involved in putting together, especially in sort of identifying the students and figuring out who they were mm -hmm. and what they did. Um, at the college, they have the, the minutes of the foundation in mm -hmm. their collection, their archives. So oh, neat. that was a great source to find out about how you know the foundation worked and you know who the professors were and all that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Lori, can you tell me about this particular piece here? Sure. Um, this is a, a measured drawing of uh, Havenwood, the Edward L. Ryerson estate. And of mm -hmm. course, Edward L. Ryerson was the major funder of the foundation yes. and the, um, the trip to Europe. But um, this drawing would have been a collaborative um, problem, is what they called it in the foundation, that mm -hmm. they would do three of those each summer. Okay. And that would be you know, one of the major things that was judged. So um, this particular one was done by three different architects or landscape architects, J.M. Frissel, M.C. Josephson, L.F. Murray. Um, it show Haven one, of course, is not still extant. Mm -hmm. You know, there are like a few sort of pieces that you can mm -hmm. see in the, the subdivision the there remains. that are, yeah, the remains that are still around. So that makes this, you know, really a valuable thing to look to, to have that documented what the layout of the garden was. Mm -hmm. Now, Lori, this particular exhibit's going to be around till probably the end of the year. Right. So there's still some time for our residents exactly. to come in and really take a look and get a yeah. tour from you and learn so much more. Right, definitely. And, you know, one thing we tried to do was include recent photographs or historic photographs of the places that were sketched so people could, oh, um, you know, have sort of a, a context for it and see either how they changed over the years or how they remained the same, like the Schweppe pool there. Fantastic. Well, Lori, it has been such a pleasure meeting okay. you. Thank you Great for taking you the time too. to sure. show me this tour, and I look forward to seeing you again at the next exhibit. Great, yes, thanks.